In this video, I will be going through the very basics of FontLab Studio 5, just to give you an overview of how the program works. So if you are a beginner, or you know, if you haven't really checked out FontLab Studio before, I can really recommend this video to you. As you can see, I have opened up FontLab Studio right now, and to create a new font, you simply click this icon up here, the new font icon. What that's going to do is open up this overview of the glyphs that you have available to you with that current encoding, which you can see down here. And what I like to do, just as a side note, is right now the menu down, is down here at the bottom. I like to bring it up to the top, and to do so, you just click this icon up here. it will just take this menu and throw it up here. When you double-click one of your glyphs here, one of the gray glyphs, you'll notice that it turns white. And once you double click one of the white ones, it's going to open up this glyph window, which is basically the canvas on which you draw your character or your glyph. And in this window, you can see that there are some different guidelines here, some horizontal guidelines. Down here, you have your descender, your baseline, your X height, calf height, and your ascender. Um, and I'll, I'll explain more about that in future tutorials, but right for now, I'm just going to tell you that they're here and and yeah, that's pretty much it. Then you have your basic tools over here. You have your selection tool, eraser, slice tool, ruler tool, then the important pen tool uh, with some some sub tools down here to that one to create different notes. And you have some basic shape tools like a rectangle and an ellipse tool. And you have your transformation tools down here, rotation, scale, and skew. If those tools are not enough for you, you can always go out to view, toolbars, paint. And that's going to open up this palette here where you have additional options of, of, of tools. You have your uh, selection tool and a pen tool and a brush tool and again some various tools over here. Then we have some different panels up here. And if you ask me, I don't think these icons are very well done. They don't really, it's not easy to tell what they do, but you know, you just got to get used to, you just got to get used to them and then, then they're okay. But Anyways, this is the uh, this basically it just opens up a new cliff window, and you can just click that s multiple times to open up more cliff windows, and you know that'll come in handy when you need to compare two cliffs uh, next to each other. And then we have our new metrics window, which is very important. I'm you have your your text mode here. Like let's say that I if I if I made the the, the characters H E L L and O, then when I type that here, you can you know you can view how the characters look down in this area and then you know you have different font sizes here that you can preview it with then here we have our preview mode which is almost the same thing um, you just have the option to, to have an underline and, and various options over here and then you have the important metrics mode and lastly the kerning mode and here we have the transformation panel. When you're in here and you made some sort of shape or whatever, you can select that shape and then bring out this panel and then use these different options to transform that shape um, in whatever style you want to. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it for that one. Then we have the macro panel. I'm gonna skip that because honestly, I don't know what it does, um, but I will investigate it so I can make a tutorial on that in the future. Um, the open type panel is very interesting. I'm, I'm using that a lot because to me open type fonts is the font to you know to export but it's the best format I think. And just to mention in some examples um, ligatures um, is an open type feature um, and you know you basically to make that you just have to write a little bit of code but I'll cover that in a, in a tutorial as well. Um, and this is also where you enable your um, your class-based kerning. Um, then here we have our preview panel, where you can preview your open type features, and just a regular preview here. Um, you have different options again with the font size. It's pretty much the same as the other preview that I showed you. Um, but um, I guess you have a you have some more space here. Anchors. Don't know what that does, but I will also investigate that in the future. This is where we have our this icon right here. The green one is our classes panel. 
and this is where you set up class-based kerning. Um, you, this is where you define the various groups um, that you want to kern together. And you can also, you also, you know, you both have the option to do um, kerning classes, and you also have the option to do metrics class kerning. So that's that one, and then a fonts panel. I've been using that a whole lot because I only I haven't made multiple weights of my fonts. I won't only made one weight, but I'm guessing that if you have like a bold italic font uh, and or maybe a an extra condensed or whatever, they would like show up in this list here. But uh, that's basically all of our panels right there. And an important window to bring up. Uh, let me just see here. Is the uh, when you when you got to window panels and editing layers, you'll see this uh, you'll see this little panel here. And let's say that I made. Let me just make a quick shape right there. Up an A. Like that. Let's just say that that's a funky A. With the editing layers palette here, you have the option to hide and show various um, various layers and define snapping and also define whether or not that current layer should be locked. And then of course you have the option here to show and hide your nodes, which are these tiny little points here. Um, I recommend that you have both of these checked on, um, otherwise it's going to be difficult for you to select your nodes or even, you know, you can't see the nodes. So. I always have those checked on, and, uh, and also these control vectors, which are, you know, if I made this a curved, um, let's just say that I have a curved shape right there, you can see that, let me just turn that off, these are the control vectors on either side of your, of your point here. Um, if that's not turned on, you know, it's, it could be a little bit difficult to see them, so. I like to have that turned on, and these are this icon here will show you the coordinates of, of each of the points here. Um, I prefer to have that turned off because it can be a little bit overwhelming if you have a lot of vector points. So um, I don't want to be flooded with that information, but um, it can be handy at sometimes. And this one here basically shows you an outline or a filled shape. Sometimes it can be good to view your shapes in outline modes, uh, but you know I prefer to switch it to the fill fill version to, to really be able to tell um, how the shape behaves. And this one here, the yin yang symbol, is something called font audit, which um, which is a feature inside of Font Lab where you can you know you can get Font Lab to tell you, hey, there's something that needs to be done with with your curve at these specific points here with the red arrows, and you can click the red arrows and and you know. Get a get a message of what what the problem is, and you can either choose to choose to fix it or just ignore it. Um, and it's got something to do with with optimal curves or and stuff like that. But I'll also tell you more about that in in, in future tutorials. Anyways, that's basically it. Oh, and I forgot to tell you something here. Let me go just open up that editing layers again. The background panel here, I'm just going to delete my shapes here. The background here um, is the layer in which you would import or drag your scanned sketches. Um, they're going to appear in the background layer automatically. And you can you know, choose the visibility of that to be on or off. And that is pretty much what I had to tell you about the, uh, the basic structure of FontLab and the various panels. And stay tuned for future tutorials where I will go in-depth with um, a lot of the things that I mentioned here. So, um, yeah, bye.